That was a cool, eh? Something a little bit different to start us off here. So, that little intro, and we're going to have an outro as well, made by the same person, come from Kevin, a.k.a. TKH Wilson on Steam, who has a link in the description you can check out if you're interested. And I think that's a pretty neat thing. So, big thank you to him, and back to our regu regularly scheduled programming. All right. Hello, everyone. Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of FTL. So it's been a while since we've been playing here, but we're back again to play around with another mod, so let's take a quick look at what we're trying out. Jump into a new game here, and this is it. We are playing Fifth Horseman's The Pyro mod, which is pretty cool. It's a little fire ship here is the idea, starting off with a fire beam and an ion blast to deal with shields. You have Rockman and a teleporter right off the bat, so this ship is all about doing fireboarding is the idea. Hopefully it'll be fun to play around with, and it has a couple interesting things about it as well. First of all, the ship here, which is a pretty cool design, is actually made by Jeff the boarding drone on the forums as well, which is pretty neat. And I will, of course, link to the thread on the forum so you can get this mod for yourself if you're interested. It has a very compact loadout here. We have a very large number of systems and a very small number of rooms. You can also get yourself a cloak and a drone control system, which I believe fill up both of the large rooms, meaning you basically have one empty space. So rockets or bombs are highly, highly damaging. Basically, no matter where they hit you, it's going to hurt something. However, the ship is also nice and compact, which is pretty cool on screen, and that's generally pretty nice. We do have a huge amount of crew as well, with a human and energy and two rockmen, and a pretty decent amount of starting power and systems. The ship tends to be pretty powerful, but in the early game, it can be quite difficult to play with, because if you run across the wrong kinds of enemies, or too powerful enemies early on, you can find yourself in a lot of trouble. So we're going to rename this sucker and get a move-in. This is going to be the VSS Inferno. We are going to rename our characters to something a little more appropriate for the ship. We will have Ash here. Enzo Martin, you're going to be renamed as... Hmm, you can be Cinder. There we go. What do you mean, Nellis? You can be Ember. Good fiery names. And Roper here can be renamed to being Smolder. Fantastic. Alright, so Ash, Cinder, Ember, and Smolder should be a pretty solid crew here. But yeah, basically we have, a, we have a pretty nice ship. The only thing we have to watch out for is enemies who can really do some damage before we can get in there. One of the things about it is we don't actually have any direct damage systems, so it's really hard for us to take out a system without having to deal with the fire damage and the close combat damage first. Hopefully it'll work out for us, but you never know. This could make for a very interesting game. Regardless, we're playing on normal, and here we go. Okay, the data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet, and it supplies for the journey, so we'll have to make sure we explore everywhere we can before we move on, and we'll also have to get to the exit. No surprises there. Cinder, you're going to head down to the engines, which we are going to power up fully, giving us that nice 30% dodge right off the bat, powering up the weapons as well. We're going to send Ember and Smolder down to the teleporter, because that's where they're going to be most useful for us. We definitely need to get in there and start harassing our enemies as quickly as possible. So we have a decent looking sector here, a bit of a nebula in the middle, which we might delve into. I'm not entirely sure about that, but we might check it out. Exit beacon's reasonably far to the end. A bit of wasted space there, but that's okay. It's only one or two jumps. Let's see what we can do here. What is our first encounter against? And it's against a scout, which we have literally no way of fighting. We detect an automated rebel scout attacking a small refueling outpost, so we're going to intervene and try and defend the outpost. Detecting the higher threat, the automated ship moves in to engage us, which is, of course, going to be a little bit problematic, because we have no way of actually fighting these guys. We're going to teleport into their weapons with our rockmen and see if we can't take them out before they suffocate. We only have level 1, so this might be a really, really stupid idea, but we're going to do it anyway, because it's fun. And then we're going to try and set them on fire, so that's added fun. Even though they have no oxygen on board their ship, we're still going to try and burn them out here. Yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. Fires. Awesome. A little tiny bit of fire and a couple of non-essential systems. Not exactly ideal, but we did take down their weapons, and we did manage to get out of there before we suffocated. Nicely done, Rockmen. Now, this is not going to kill them, pretty much anyway, but it's always fun to try and burn them out. Thing is, since we have no way of actually doing... Oops, they're not killing them now. Since we have no way of actually doing direct damage to them now apart from the fires, which have a very low chance of actually doing any damage, the odds of us being able to kill these guys without sacrificing our entire crew is pretty low, although we did manage to do a burn damage there to that system, which is surprising. We could try again. If we get really lucky with the amount of time the fires stay, it might be possible to kill them this way, but we really should not count on it. Alright, fire beam through there again just for lulz. Unfortunately, we didn't get both flames in there, which means it's unlikely it's going to actually be destroyed, but we can do our best. Alright, we might have to board them again and see if we can't do a bit more damage, because if we can take out a couple systems and leave them to have one point remaining, we might be able to kill them like this. So we're going to jump back into the weapons here, take out the last point of damage, because that will actually destroy the system. 
and give us a lovely point of damage on them. Good. If we head over to the engines, we might be able to take that out as well. We'll even set it on fire at the same time. Let's see what we can do with that. Because if we can get a last hit in there with the fire damage, we might actually be able to kill them. All right, we're going to have to run away before we do anything else, because otherwise our crew is going to die again. So get them out of there. Fantastic job, Rockman. This is going to be a very slow fight. But we're not going to run. We're going to show this auto scout that we can kill them, even if we have nothing else to kill them with. I'm going to fire beam right through here again. If we can get lucky with the fire timers, like I said, we might be able to take a system out like this. No, nope, not that time. Sometimes the fire stays for a long time, sometimes it really, really doesn't. Nothing we can do but try, though. We do have three hull points left on there, so we have a bit of leeway. The last thing we want to have them do, though, is actually fully repair something. So the odds of us being able to do two points specifically, and we can't see how much power they actually have left, are not super high. So we're going to try and take them out again here. There we go. Take out the other point on the engines before we have to teleport home. And then they have one hull point left, which we might be able to burn out on one of these systems, which would be nice. So, smash up that engine, please, gentlemen. There we go. We are also leveling up our fighting skill, which is nice. And now they are down to the point where we're hoping for. Now we have to burn them and get lucky with those fire timers. Odds are low that this is going to work out because we've got one fire in the room we were trying to actually burn. But it's not the end of the world yet. We might still be able to get them. We might still be able to get them. The problem is if they heal up more than one point, we're going to basically have to run. Because we won't be able to do enough damage to kill them out quickly enough with fire. So we can, again, try and burn through here. We really need to get both sections of the room on fire, which we're not getting here. It keeps only doing one. The odds of one doing enough fire damage quickly enough and not burning out are pretty low. One is staying in here for a long time, though. Not enough, though. Still not enough. That's the problem. It's hard to just get it consistent enough to actually do the burn damage. It is possible, just very unlikely. So we'll try again in the, in, in the weapons. We want to take that thing out. There we go. There's two. We might actually be able to get them with that. Depending on how fast they burn out, we might do enough damage. Can we? No, not unfortunately not. Ugh, come on now, fire ship. You're cool and all, but this is not an enemy we're supposed to be able to fighting with fire. Okay. Okay. Let's try this again. <laughs> One of these days it'll go down. One of these days it'll go down. Go! And there's both on fire again. We might get them this time. We might get them this time. Engines are back up and weapons still fine. Okay, we're gonna try and get the engines because they only just repaired them for the first time. So they might not have as many levels in them yet. We might be able to actually destroy those. So if we fire beam right through there, we might get lucky and set enough fires in this room to actually take them out. But it is a bit of a uh, random chance thing here still. Can we destroy them with this fire? It looks like it. That's really good. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! Take that, Auto Scout! We destroyed someone who's immune to fire with fire. Ship breaks apart and we salvage what we can, getting three fuel, a missile, nine scrap, and a heavy laser mark one. The game rewards us for our hard work there. Wow. Ugh. The outpost hails us after the scout was destroyed, thanking us for the help and saying that we've been harassed not and stopped by the scouts. They give us two fuel, drone part, and 14 scrap. Fantastic. And a heavy laser. That is a really nice start, actually. A really nice start. <laughs> Taking down that first drone of the day gives us a beautiful reward. Okay, so let's see if we can't put this to use. Now we actually have a weapon we can use. If we can get this with the Ion Blast to take out their shields, get these both active at the same time, we'll be so much more powerful in the early game. Because we'll be able to take out their weapons and then fire beam them and then board them to death. That is amazing. This will be so good. Okay, let's jump over this way. We'll probably head around here maybe and swing around the back. That's what I'm picturing anyway. We will see how it actually goes. Just please don't give me another robot ship right away. We detect two ships, one chasing the other. Scanners show the pursuer is a pirate. Let's get in there and help those civilians. We have an inferno to start. And it's a Zoltan ship. Of course it is. We power up weapons and engage the pirates. All right, we turn off the fire beam now to use the heavy laser because that will fire a little bit faster to knock down those shields. There we go. It doesn't really matter what we're aiming at, but we do want to knock them out as quickly as possible so we can get in there. They have no med kit. They have an NG and a human, so our boarding party will be pretty fantastic even without fire. We just took a hit in the oxygen, though, which is not great, so we're going to have to go fix that up. Turn off the heavy laser. Turn it off. Turn on the fire beam. We're going to teleport into the ship right now, into the weapons. Bring it on, suckers. All right, once that fire beam is good to go, we should be able to do some nasty damage to them with fire as well. Unfortunately, we can't do any direct damage to the weapons right now, so we'll have to just get lucky with the dodges. Please, oh, that's an empty room. I'm happy with that. Fire beam's going to be coming in in a second here. There it goes. And setting them on fire is always nice. Those humans are going to be in a bit of trouble in a second. We should be able to burn out most of their weapons here. They got unlucky and missed us there. There goes one of the shots. Come on now, take out that dual laser before they manage to get another shot off with it. Thank you. Excellent. Now we should be able to go up and kill these guys at our leisure, since the remaining systems are nicely damaged. So... 
Hello, friends. You get punched to death now. Awesome work there, Rockman. That was nice. All right. No more life signs detected on the pirate ship. We hasten to contact the civilian ship after gathering two missiles, a drone part, and 21 scrap. The crew we saved was badly damaged in battle, and most of the crew accepts our offer to be dropped off at a nearby station. However, one offers to join us. Well, that's also really awesome. Who do we get? Survivor gets on board, and they are Brecken, another rockman. Well, Brecken, you're our new pilot. Ash, you're going to take over weapons. All right, we also need to get our crew out of there before that ship burns up. There we go. So, the reason we're putting Brecken on the helm there is because rockmen are really nice when they don't have to do anything. When they can just stand still, it's much better. The fact of their low mobility is no longer a problem, and it's actually quite nice to have them in there because they have that extra health, so they can tank a couple more hits in the middle of a heated battle, and they're good at putting out fires if the helm happens to burn. So, it works out pretty nicely for us. All we need now is someone on shields, and we'll be pretty nicely equipped. The reason I'm prioritizing weapons here is to get that fire beam firing a little bit faster, because it is fairly slow and is pretty key to our ability to actually fight these people. Now, we also need six more scrap before we can buy another power bar, but we might buy this weapon control upgrade now anyway and use a power from the engines to run the heavy laser, because having access to taking out their weapons on our own is amazing. A little funny thing about this ship is that these weapons are like they're located underneath the hull, I think, because that's why they're not sticking out the side. They're currently active. If we deactivate them, they shrink right underneath. So that's kind of cool. You can see on the top here as well, you deactivate it, shrinks right underneath the hull. So that's kind of neat. Let us get back into the fight, though. We have plenty of places to go. There's a distress beacon over here, so we should go check that out. Is there anything interesting going on at this distress beacon? The distress signal is coming from a small space station orbiting an uninhabited planet. The satellite defenses have gone haywire, and the repair crew can't approach without being fired on, so they're looking for helps to fix or disable it. Well, let's use an ion weapon to disable the defense system. Pew! We use our ion weaponry to disable the gun long enough for the repair crews to fix it. They message us, saying... I've never seen a weapon like that before. Thanks for your help. Please accept this reward, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and 19 scrap. Now, I don't know how they've never seen one of those before, because it's an iron weapon, this game is full of them, but maybe they're just entirely oblivious to the technological advances of the last 20 years. Who knows? Or 2,000 years, who knows? Let's get over here and keep moving, because we have lots of space to cover today. What do we see here? We discover a nearby planet speckled with settlements, although none respond to our hails. So the answer is, we see nothing there. That's fine, let's keep moving. Plenty of space left to cover. Hello. Upon completing our jump, we receive a message from a nearby ship saying, Greetings, and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. Well, they have a Lido missile launcher and a heavy laser. Lido missile's the only problem. We're going to reject that offer. And they say we will re regret that decision, but I don't think we will. They boarded us directly into two rock men, so I think they're going to reject regret that decision. We're going to ion blast them in the weapons, and then heavy laser them in the weapons. That's what I meant to say in the first place. And they've knocked out our oxygen again. They don't want us to breathe much, do they? Okay, ion blast them. In a second, we're going to be setting them on fire. We've killed off the person who boarded us, and we're going to actually teleport directly in there, because it looks like our heavy laser set them on fire, which is even better. Fire beam is going to set their med bay on fire. Oh, unfortunate timing there. And he has already run off to the shield room, so it's time to go punch him to death before he burns. Okay, we're not going to be firing the laser again. That's fine. Punch that mantis to death. There we go. <laughs> Augment. This is ridiculous. The game just throws stuff at us right now. There are no more life signs remaining on the ship. We stripped the some material, getting a fuel, two missiles, and 18 scrap, as well as an automated reloader. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to complain about that. That should allow us to actually lock down higher level shields now, because it'll make our ion blast fire faster than it decharges, which is ridiculously powerful. Okay. <laughs> If you say so, game. If you say so. We already got another crew, a heavy laser, and an automated reloader. So this mitigates the problem with this ship, that you can't directly attack anything. The automated reloader makes it more powerful because the ion blast is more effective against shields. Fire beam fires quicker. Heavy laser is more effective at taking out weapons. And it is ridiculous. Okay. 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 Three jumps with fights. Three amazing rewards. It's really hard to complain about that. Hopefully we can keep this up because that would be amazing. So let's send our crew back into the teleporter and continue the battles. Also, we should really send Cinder back to the engines. Okay, well, it can only get better from here, I guess. Let's jump over this way and see what we see. What have we got at this beacon? We find the ship is flooded with advertisement transmissions from a nearby merchant as soon as we arrive at the beacon. We arbitrarily pick one to examine in detail, and it is an offer of seven fuel for two drone parts. Definitely taking that one. We have no need for drone parts at the moment, and fuel is always useful. Up to 23 fuel already, that's fantastic. If we jump over to this distress beacon, we're probably not going to be able to make it into the nebula, but that's okay. I was... That's probably better for us in the long run. The extra fuel will be helpful. Let's check out this distress beacon, though, and see what we can do from there. So, what do we see here? We arrive at the distress beacon and immediately detect a pirate ship. It turns out this distress beacon was a trap. 
All right, they've got some decent stuff. They have basic laser and ion blast, so they will be able to take out our shields and potentially do damage. But we should be able to take theirs. Oh, come on now, don't miss. Ow, our oxygen again. What do you have against our ability to breathe? All right, heavy laser them again. And you know what, we're, come on, we can't even hit these guys. They have nothing, literally nothing. Set them on fire. All right, and time to teleport into them. We need to power into the teleporter to do so, and we're gonna jump into the weapon systems. They can't fix that thing, so it burns. And we're gonna heavy laser them in the something else. I'd love to heavy laser them in the weapons right now, but that's not gonna happen. The fire is still burning in there, so that's fine. There goes the ions. They can no longer do too much to us. Although, perfect, it hits us just before it recharges. All right, we are going to fire beam them in some other rooms just for fun there. Hello, friends. And we're not gonna heavy laser again because I can't see anything. We're gonna send Cinder over to fix our... Uh, what do you call them? That thing. And they try and surrender, offering us a fuel, a missile, and nine scrap. We don't accept their paltry surrender and come in to try and murder whoever's left. There's our friends. Hello. We're going to club this human to death, and that is a victory for us. There are no more life signs remaining on the ship, so we strip it of useful material, getting a fuel, a drone part, and 21 scrap. We're going to teleport our crew back out of that raging inferno and back into the med bay. Cinder's going to go fix our broken doors. Thing is, though, we're still taking a lot of damage here because we have very weak shields. So the next bit of our money is going to go into powering up our shields to level 2. That should make us pretty powerful for this stage, and we can alternate between level 2 shields and level 4 engines based on what the enemy we're fighting actually has. Because a lot of the time, level 2 shields is enough to completely neutralize your enemy, like this one would not have been able to hurt us if we had had those a little bit sooner. But we have to prioritize things, and sometimes we can't always get exactly what we need. All right, so if we can go here and make that jump, that would be really nice, because then we can get one, two, three, four, five, six, probably, but if we go one, two, three, then we'll be out of space. Hmm, that looks like it is behind the red line. It, it looks like it's right in the middle there. Besides, if we head over there, we won't be able to get it anyway. Let's try this one. If we can make it there to jump the nebula, that would be great. If not, we can always head over this way and work our way around the sides. The nebula is our target, though, because if we can get in there, we'll be doing pretty good. All right, we find another robot, but we have a not heavy laser now, so we're not quite so worried about them. An advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station, and sensors indicate that it's a storage vessel for military goods, so of course, we're going to go check it out. We're going to attack the automated ship to get to that storage cache. We're also going to start immediately knocking out their weapons with all of our arsenal, because the last thing we want to get happening is being hit by nasty burst laser mark threes, or twos, rather. There we go, now their weapons are completely offline, and they have a breach in them, so they're unrepairable. That is one great thing about the enemy drones. They are unable to repair anything that's breached, so you can just smack them around, and then they can't do anything. We're going to aim for the helm here so we don't miss another shot. Thank you very much. Please hit. Thank you. Now they can't dodge us, and the next shot will kill them because they had so little health. What a nice enemy. All right, burn those suckers just to add insult to injury, and now they're dead. Fantabulous. What do we get? We salvaged 12 scrap from the broken ship, which isn't great, but when we investigate the station, we find that it's a storage site for various resources. We salvaged 3 fuel, 4 missiles, and 9 scrap from the wreckage, which is also not great, but not bad either, so I shouldn't really complain. Not enough to buy another power bar to recharge the engines, though, so that's unfortunate. Alright. We can make it to the nebula, so that's perfect. If we're going to jump into there, that should give us a little bit of extra time, a couple extra jumps. Is there anything here? No, it's hard to see why, but this beacon is apparently a tourist destination. One of the ships at the small station here is offering us a deal of two fuel for four missiles, which we are going to ignore, because we don't need missiles at the moment, and that is a waste of our resources. We jump up to the next nebula beacon and see what we can get there, and then we'll probably head over to the exit or something like that. A pirate ship arrives shortly after us. Judging from the fact that they're attempting to avoid our ship, we assume they're a smuggler trying to stay away from the beacons. However, we're going to attack their ship nonetheless and see what happens. Get in there. We power up weapons and move in to engage. All right, we're going to ion blast them in the shields. They've probably got Rockmen on there. They only have one layer of shields. They do have nasty weapons, though, so we're going to heavy laser them in the weapons as soon as we possibly can, and then we're probably going to board them and set fire to the weapons so they can't fix them. They did manage to fire a missile at us, though, which is not great, and they hit us right in the room I was in before I managed to teleport out of it, which is even more irritating. Set fire to a variety of different rooms. That should distract people, and we can take out the rest of their weapons. It is really unfortunate that missile hit us, but there's really nothing we can do about it. We're going to come in here and fix up the teleporter whilst we can, and now we're going to go hunt down the remaining crew, since they have no actual uh, uh, med bay here. We don't have to worry about them healing up. And they hail us, offering us two fuel, two missiles, and ten scrap if we let them live. But we are, of course, merciless, merciless, murderous rocks. So we're going to make sure everyone dies. And we do have a rock man in here, which is not great, because it means we're not going to do a whole lot of damage with the fires. But we should be able to kill him no problem before his ship burns to death. So that is fine. We are going to lose oxygen in a second, which is going to cause a little bit of problems, but we can't actually kill us here because of the fact that we have so much, uh, 
There's so many systems on the ship, they can't actually burn out the entire hull. These guys do not want to fight us. I don't know where he's going. All right, we're going to in here and punch him to death. Thank you, you dead rock man, Maxim. There we go. <laughs> and an ion bomb. Are you serious? With the crew dead, we search the ship and find military-grade weaponry, taking an ion bomb from the wreckage, getting 14 scrap. That's insane! This is... Oh, man. The game is just throwing good stuff at us here. This is ridiculous. If we don't win this now, I'll be incredibly surprised, because... What luck is this? I have never seen the game be quite so generous. Oh, I say this every time the game is really generous, but the point, point is, you rarely ever see it be this generous, because that's crazy. Alright, let's fix up our rockmen in the med bay. Fantastic. Get them back to the teleporter. Look at this. Look at this. Ion blast, ion bomb, heavy laser, fire beam. This is amazing for the entire, like, first, I don't know, probably half of the game. Crazy. Alright, well, we're up to three bars of power in the engines again, which is great. We could go directly to the exit here, which we may well do, and then if we want to do an extra jump, we can jump away and then jump back. We might even be able to go one, two, and then back, which would be pretty nice, although we will have to fight somebody at the exit. We'll have to wait and see from that then. We arrive at the long-range beacon, and what do we have here? We see a civilian space station hit with heavy damage. They offer to buy our drone parts in order to speed up their repairs, saying they've been hit hard by the war. We don't have any extra ones, though, so we can't, unfortunately, sell them any. We did sell them earlier to get extra fuel, so that's fine, anyway. Okay, so we could try and jump one jump away, because if we jump to here, that'll advance the Rebel Alliance to there for next jump. So, if, yeah, we can go one, two, three if we want. Might not be the best idea, but let's do it anyway. Hopefully the enemies we fight at the uh, Rebel Elite Fighter Beacon aren't going to be too nasty. And look at this, more fuel. We arrive at a quiet spaceport and are immediately hailed by another ship at port with a once-in-a-lifetime deal of 10 fuel for two drone parts. Yeah, okay, I don't need the drone parts, and 10 fuel is going to blast us the entire game here. All right, madness. Well, we have one more jump before we have to get out to that exit beacon, so we're going to head over here and then head back. Hopefully we get something good here, something that will get us a bit of scrap so we can power up. And it's a fire beacon, not what I wanted. This beacon has been placed too close to a supergiant Class M star. The ship will gradually overheat until we get out of there or die, and a pirate, oblivious to the danger of the sun, moves in to engage us. Thankfully for us, though, they have literally no way of effectively fighting us. They have only enough damage here to do two bars of shields. The real issue here is getting hit by the sun. So if we can take these guys out quickly, and we're going to do that in a second, by knocking out their major systems and then immediately setting them on fire, because that's always fun. Come on now, knock out that system. There we go, set them on fire. There we go. We're going to watch out. We're going to take some fire damage here, but hopefully our level 2 shields should mitigate that a little bit. Yeah, only one little bit of fire damage. That's fine. We did take an actual damage from the burn as well, but that's not so bad. That is a dead rock man, and that is a dead NG. Chip is trying to power up its FTL to escape, but it is currently dead. We get one fuel drone part and 21 scraps. So we're going to teleport out of there. Get out of there. Get into the med bay. Close that door. Heal up our crew, because we're going to need them in a second. Power that out of the engines for a second. We're probably going to run away as soon as we hear that flare start up. Oh boy. We want to get as much healing in as we can before we leave, though, because as soon as we leave, we're going to be fighting a Rebel Elite. So we're going to jump out of here straight to this exit beacon, which is going to have to fight off some people, but that should be fine. What are we facing here? We found the exit beacon, but the Rebels got here first. We'll have to survive long enough to jump to the next sector, and it looks like they've got actually some nasty stuff there. So we're going to quickly power up our engines to full, perhaps? I think we'll leave it like this. We want to be able to block as much of this as we can. We're going to try and ion blast them out, try and take out those weapons quickly. We did take a hit here. That's not so good. Another one in their weapons, which is not good either. We really need those systems back online here, otherwise we're not going to be able to fight these guys. They do have a med bay as well. We just need to run. This would be really, really silly if I die here because of this. We need to get out of here right now. All right. Get those shields back up and running. We take a hit in radar now. This is ridiculous. Not good, not good, not good. I'm pushing my luck, and I'm being punished for it. All right, get back into the engines. Please don't hit us, and they hit us directly in the face. All right, we have a, a, more about a third of our health left. That's fine. We're going to jump out of here right now. Jump. We are getting out of this area. Pirate-controlled sector. Here we come. All right, that was really bad on my part. I should not have pushed my luck like that, but you know what? Sometimes you got to do silly things. This somewhat isolated region was thrown into chaos at the start of the rebellion. Even in peacetime, it was always beset by pirates, but now it houses a center of operations for countless pirate fleets. Alright, so we're going to do some repairs in here, fix all this stuff up before everyone dies a horrible, horrible death, because I really did not manage that last fight well. We lost a ton of damage there. But honestly, I'm okay with this. <laughs> I don't really mind. We, are, we should have bought that power bar before we left, but we were in a fire beacon, so it makes it a bit more difficult. That powers up our engines to full. There we go. Oh boy. Well, that's fine. 
We are doing really nicely here so far, and we've coming out on top of our fights as they stand. Thing is, if we run into more enemies like that Rebel Elite, we are going to get absolutely trashed. They are generally leveled up higher than you could reasonably be at this stage, though, so I'm not surprised we had a hard time fighting them with a low direct damage ship. Alright, so we'll heal up our crew here. I think everybody needs a little bit of health, but we'll prioritize our Rockmen because they heal nice and slowly. Once we get our med bay upgraded, it'll be a little bit nicer to have them around because they will heal a lot faster in between fights. But for now, we'll have to make do with what we got. We should really be healing up Cinder in here as well at the same time. Ash is good to go back to the weapons and Cinder back to engines. I'd love to get one more crew for the shields, but we might be pushing things at this stage of the game. Alright. That is that, that is that. We have a Jess Beacon right in front of us, a bunch of Nebula. Not a whole lot on this part of the map. We might try and go all three of these beacons and then see if we can jump out. We might actually have to go across to there. Hmm. I'm just going to play it safe. We could probably make that jump. Let's try the Jess Beacon because it's generally profitable and if we can get out of here then that's good. If not, then we can go back. We haven't wasted too much time here. We find the source of the distress call here, a small research station where it appears that a small laboratory fire has gotten out of control and is burning down the entire station. Well, you guys need to learn how to have better safety protocols in your laboratory situations. Let's send our rock crew member in to suppress that fire for them. The rock soldier tears through the airlock directly into the fire, and we've never seen someone that large move that fast! Which is surprising, because we have three of them, but that's okay. It disperses as much fire, fire suppression as possible into the heart of the blaze, and eventually the fires die down. When we contact the survivors, we find with the fire under control, the scientists are able to help secure the station. They offer us 29 scrap and a repair arm. Not my favorite um, reward. Oh good, we can make it out over here. But definitely a nice one, especially because we are low on health. So until we can get to a store to sell it, it will help us get a little bit of health back. Having things that take away from your scrap earnings are generally not my favorites. And we jumped into an ion storm. But, it could definitely be worse. We jump into the middle of a plasma storm, where multiple recently incapacitated ships loom in the shadows, briefly illuminated by lightning. We can manually search the wreckage for survivors and equipment, which is what we're always going to do, even though there is a risk associated with it, or we could avoid the risk and wait to jump away unscathed. Let's manually search the wreckage. What do we find? Despite our caution, the lack of detection equipment allows debris to crash into our ship, damaging the hull. We salvage what we can, getting 6 fuel, 2 drone parts, and 14 scrap, and we try to jump away before anything else happens. Getting a little bit of health back, but we did lose 3 scrap. Okay, we could jump over to this one as well and see what's going on there, so let's do that, and then we'll jump out and try and find somewhere nicer. Actually, you know what? We might just go out here and see if we can find a store directly, because we are pretty low on hull at the moment. And we jumped into an asteroid field. Thank you. We arrive in the asteroid field to discover a rebel automated scout station here to prepare to fight. Thankfully, they have no shield, so we should be fine, as long as we can quickly power up our systems here so we don't get absolutely plastered. There we go. And oxygen, please. Thank you very much. We're not going to try and board these guys, because that would be absolutely insane. We are going to try and blast them into weapons at high priority. Unfortunately, they managed to get an ion shot right in on our weapons through our shields, because that's just how the game felt like playing today. So, can we hit them today, please? Yes, thank you. That would be great. The asteroids are doing a great job of it, but we can't seem to hit them at all. There's a nice hit from the ion, and a heavy laser should make them into a lot of trouble. There we go. One bit of HP left. No weapons are currently active on board that ship. I am quite happy with that. Alright, we're going to leave this. One more shot should do it from the asteroids. There they go. Auto scout goes down. Not a problem. We got lucky there with some early dodges. Ship explodes, giving us three fuel drone part and 22 scrap. Brilliant. We have a ton of scrap now. What we really need is a shop. We're probably going to hop around to these beacons over here on the edge just to make sure we don't waste too much time here because the last thing we want to do is get to the exit and not be able to do anything else. What do we have here? We barely have time to register jump completion, but our ship warns us of an incoming ship with weapons hot. Alright, this should be fine. They have a uh, pike beam and a heavy, la or heavy laser mark one, yes, so they can't actually hurt us at all. We're going to clear them out and then probably murder them with fire because they have no med bay either, and that will be nice. Although we'll have to wait for things to actually charge up for that to happen. There we go. Ion blast, please hit. And boop. And we're going to hit them in the weapons, and we're going to set them on fire, like so. And then we're going to board them in the fire, like so. I hope you guys like burning to death. Even though we have a one-man disadvantage in here, they're also burning, so that shouldn't be a problem. And they're both two of them are NGs, so we really shouldn't have a problem. Now we can literally just relax in here whilst their ship burns to a horrible death, although they do have higher-level doors, which we can't really have. It's going to take us a while to get through here at this rate, so we're probably going to want to knock those out as well. So we're going to hit them in the shields again with one of those and knock out the doors. Thank you! Now you have a couple problems on your hands. Fire's going to spread faster, and you're not going to be able to stop us from getting to you. There they go, they're all dead. No more life signs remaining on the ship, so we strip it of materials, getting three fuel, two missiles, and 29 scrap. Magnificent. All right. They have slug repair gel, obviously, so their hull is healing itself. And we took a bit of damage there, so we'll send them back down to the med bay to heal up. Fantastic. 90 scrap. That would get us some nice repairs. It'll also afford to buy us level 5 engines, though, and those are really nice. 
That's probably our best bet for right now. We want to get level 5 engines, then we're going to want to upgrade our teleporter and our med bay. That's probably our next course of action after this, because that will help keep us alive and give us access to some higher level blue options. All right, there's a distress beacon over there, which we could go check out still, but I think we're going to jump over to this beacon and then check it out, because there's a whole pile of beacons over here, and a good amount of time left on the clock. So let's get most use out of it as possible. And of course, it's another asteroid belt, finding another drone inside, but that's okay. Drones aren't so bad, especially not in asteroid belts. So we arrive here to find that a rebel automated scout has been stationed and prepare to fight them. That's fine by me, especially when their stuff is already getting knocked out by the asteroids. We're actually going to go try and get the weapons here, because if we can do that, that would be amazing. Especially because we managed to get a random shot in the shields already. Knock those out. They're on fire now. They're in a bit of trouble. Our shields took some damage as well, though, so we're going to send our two rock men in there to quick fix it nice and quick. We really want these guys to be in as much trouble as possible. Now that we're ioned out, we're in some serious trouble. Let's try and not get horribly murdered. They're knocking out our shields while we're repairing the shields. Please, there we go. Shields are back online. Thank you. And hit them in the helm so they can't dodge anymore. There we go. Now they're doomed. Alright, that could have gone a little bit better, but it went pretty well, all told. Anyway, we do still have that repair arm keeping us alive, and we can kill them with a heavy laser just for fun. There we go. And send our Rockman back down to the med bay. Two fuel missile and 24 scrap is our reward for destroying them, and that is nice. These asteroid belt drones, there's been so many of them in this last episode, it's weird. Very weird, not something you normally see a whole lot of. Alright, let's get out of town here, we'll power back into the teleporter and jump out. There's a distress beacon over here and a distress beacon over here. Not exactly what I had in mind, but let's go check out one of them and then we'll go check out the other one, see if we can find a store or something that will heal us soon. Uh, a ship without life forms in the nearby dense asteroid field is giving off the distress call. We can investigate despite the danger, which might give us a chance of getting the Crystal Crew pod, or some pirate ship, which will give us some loot, or getting smashed in the face by crystals, which is probably what's going to happen and is going to really hurt. Let's search for the ship. Nope, we find a pirate ship. Damaged and abandoned. Fantastic. We salvage what we can and move on, leaving two fuel, drone part, and 26 scrap. At this stage, I am totally fine with that. Nice bit of extra hull as well. That's always good. We have a ton of nice things already, actually ton of nice things already for this early in the game. It's ridiculous. We can go straight for the med bay and the crew teleporter. We can't power them both at the moment. We're going to get the med bay because it gives us a lot of blue options. And we might even get a power bar to run it. I think we'll leave off on that for now, though. And we'll hold on to the other 30 scrap in case we can find a store like this one. We might even head over here directly because if we can get there... Hang on. If it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's probably too many jumps. The store is a useful thing for us because we can sell off our repair arm and get a bit of extra health back directly from the store. They might have useful things as well, other augments we might want. It's hard to say though, because we will miss some... Eh, this is probably the best bet for us. We need to go to the store, we're low on health, we have a spare augment we don't really want to hold on to for too long, so that's probably the best choice. We find a few small ships here, visible in the vid screen, and they almost activate weapons targeting. However, sensors indicate they're simply honest merchants. The pirates must be making us jumpy, so we message them, about the <laughs> we message them to apologize and ask about their wares. They're selling crew. We could try and buy a crew. Stealth weapons and another automated reloader wouldn't be bad either. We could sell them our repair arm, because we really don't want to hold on to that, because it will drain our overall scrap gain. We could buy some repairs. Stealth weapons aren't going to help us at this point because of the fact that we don't have the stealth system. But we could buy another automated reloader, which would make us even more dangerous. A 30% cooldown reduction is ridiculously good. I'm not sure, though. I guess we might as well. You know what? We got money to, money to burn. Let's buy that. There we go. Now we're even better off. Super fast recharge on all of our gear. This is a ridiculously powerful ship already. Alright, and not because of any balance issues, it's just really good. We're going to head over here, and then we might be able to go 1, 2 even into the nebula and back out again. We'll have to wait and see how it goes, though. Or maybe into the nebula first. I'm not sure how this is going to work. And we'll get a free weapon. A small merchant ship messages us, saying, Underground Federation comm channels are all talking about your secret mission. Let us install a weapon to help. Good luck giving us 15 scrap and a pike beam. Well, that pike beam's probably never going to see use, but it is nice to have free things. Yeah, actually, if we go here, can we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? That'd be hilarious. A 1, one 2, 3, 4, 5? Because here's the thing. If we go here, that's going to reduce the next jump down to just a tiny bit. It's going to go like that far, so we can easily get to the distress beacon. The question then is, can we make it to this jump before it goes again? And we might actually be able to, which would be hilarious. Can we do it? Because if it's about this long right now, it's about there to about there, and the next one is only going to go about there to about there, do we have enough space from here to here? I think we actually do. And if we don't, we can like jump over here and then one to our way out. We might have to fight somebody at the exit, but you know what? I'm okay with this. This looks like it might be really interesting if we can actually manage it. And we might have to fight something nasty in the unvisited location, but we're going to face it anyway and see what we get. There's a good chance there's also going to be nothing there. 
We find a heavily damaged Federation ship hiding in the nebula of this beacon. Before we have time to make contact with them, they fade away into the nebula. So we're going to lock onto their life signs with our new upgraded teleporter and see if we can get them on board with us. We beam the Federation crew aboard. One gladly joins our crew and the rest wait to be dropped off the next station, giving us 25 scrap and... Oh, Artyom! Excellent. We got a Zoltan. Perfect to power our shields. Fantastic. All right. Well, we have our sixth crew exactly like we wanted. This is nice. Six crew, some extra resources. This is a crazy powerful ship for Sector 2. <laughs> it's crazy. All right. Let's, oh, we didn't actually upgrade our teleporter. Okay. All we needed was to have a teleporter, I guess. And you know what? We can certainly do that. We should probably upgrade the teleporter, but I'm going to hold on to a little bit of resources. There's a store over here we could go to if we want to, but I think we'll go for this just beacon and then try and get out in time. What do we have at this just beacon? Hopefully something lovely we can get a blue nice option for. What do we see? Ooh, it appears that a just beacon is coming from the surface of a nearby moon. Our sensors are picking up a single life form, so let's go down to the surface to investigate. We find a man living alone in a cave. From the appearance of his wrecked ship, it seems he's been here for many years. He looks healthy, but his mental state is questionable. Thankfully, we have a med bay, so let's bring him to the med bay and see what that does for him. Once in inside our advanced med bay, the system is able to identify and minimize the trauma associated with being alone for so long. Once awake, he states... I don't know how to repay you. I feel ten years younger. Let me serve on your ship. Yeah, okay. You are Charlie, another human. Unfortunately, Charlie, you're probably going to get jettisoned as soon as we have someone, anyone, any, anyone more useful than you. But for now, you can be some mobile repair guy, and that is better than nothing, because we don't have one of those yet. Okay. So that will do for now. 41 scrap is also pretty good. Can we? Yes, we can make it to this beacon before we run out of time. And we should be able to make it to that one as well. We might even be able to make two jumps there, which would be hilarious. This is going great as planned. What can we do from here? Well, we arrive, and upon completing our jump, we receive a message from a nearby ship saying, Greetings, and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. Well, thanks for the offer there, chum, but I'm not interested in paying you scrap for nothing. We're going to reject your offer and then murder you horribly. We don't pay tolls. What are you talking about? They say we will, regret, we will regret the decision, but I don't really think we will. We're going to start smacking them up with our various weaponry. It should hit them nice and quick as well, since we do have those lovely fast recharge timers, although we did manage to miss them with the ion blast, which is not great. Here come some lasers, setting our teleporter on fire. That's not very nice at all. Let's give them some fire too then, if that's how they want to play it. And I should really not be aiming for the shields right now, I should be aiming for the weapons, but I didn't aim at the right thing. Alright, once we get our teleporter repaired, we'll be able to get back in there. We're smacking up their weapons a little bit, now they can't hurt us, so we'll turn off the heavy laser for now. Teleport into their med bay, because if we can keep them from putting out the fires there, they'll never, never, whoa, no, no, no! I didn't look at the actual hit ship's health, and we've lost our two rock men. What a loss. Ship explodes, even behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Three fuel, a missile, and 23 scrap, but at what cost? At what cost? That's the problem with trying to do things quickly. As you try and go faster, it's easier to miss the really important things you should be seeing. And now, we lost our two rockmen. That's going to hurt. That's going to make it really hard to replace. And our firefighting is not going to go quite so well now that we don't have people who are immune to fire. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes sometimes, and that was a really bad one to make. Especially because the ship was going so well, too. But let's head over to the exit and see if we can't possibly recover this. That hurt. Ouch. That was really stupid of me. We've arrived at the Long Range Beacon, and when the FTL drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector. We arrive near a damaged and dilapidated space station, which appears to be abandoned, but we do detect faint life signatures on board. Let's board the station and look for some survivors. Despite the danger, we might lose somebody else, but who knows. Human corpses are scattered across the station. We find the source of the signal. A lone survivor locked themselves in a storage closet. We quickly retreat with them in tow back to the ship and hope they can recover enough to be of some use. Getting 12 scrap and... Davy and a human. Not as cool as a rock man. That would have been amazing if we had a rock man to replace our two dead rock men. We have two humans, which we can use in boarding actions if we need to, but they're not going to be as cool as our rock men. <sighs> what a waste. What a waste. Ember and Smolder, you guys died far too soon. An undeserved death entirely my own fault. Alright, let's see if we can get back in here and cover something, because that was sucky. Alright, well, that's the end of the sector. We're doing great so far, apart from that one really stupid flub, and we can go to the Zoltan Homeworlds next. That's exactly where we're going to go. A Zoltan Homeworlds is better than an Uncharted Nebula, because it has a good chance for a very easy, free stuff mission. Not to mention the fact that we have a bunch of friendly units here. We might be able to get some nice green options for, blue options for, rather. To, to the Zoltan Homeworlds we go. Ugh, I feel like a fool. <laughs> That's okay, though. We've entered Zoltan territory. This species is not renowned for giving anything for nothing, but we can always be assured a fair hearing. 
All right, guys. Well, <sighs> nicely done. We did a pretty fantastic job here so far, apart from that one fatal flaw. We have a very powerful ship so far, with two automated reloaders, a full arsenal of gear, pike beam and storage. We've got a pretty decent complement of crew now, minus the two rockmen. We have got ourselves some nice upgrades in our ship, and generally things are going in our favor. However, we're going to have to end this episode here for now. So, thank you for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor, playing some FTL for you on board the BSS Inferno, which is, of course, Fifth Horseman's The Pyro Ship Mod, which you can get for yourself in the description of this video. Whew, if you liked the episode, don't forget to like the episode, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.